Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Ian Chiquino, and today I got with me Fan. Hello, Fan. What's up, Ian? Not much. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. So yeah, I am Fan. Um, I was originally a like I guess around thirty one hundred diamond player, but I've dropped down to like twenty seven, twenty eight hundred in the Masters League. So yeah, this is a pretty high level ladder match. Yeah, the Masters level just came out uh, yesterday. I just got in that uh, after losing a game, then winning two. So uh, I, I guess we're going to have to start calling each other Master. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to do that. But uh, so let's see. we got a TVP here on Jungle Basin. Uh, what's your strategy for this uh, matchup on this map? Um. Well, my TVP is slightly well, it's a lot different from most Terran's TVP. Uh, mostly, you see Terran's go mass bio medivax, but I don't. I don't really like that option because you always lose out to Protoss in the late game. So, generally, I use a specific mech build against Protoss, which I've developed since the beta. So that's what we're gonna see me do in this game. All right. So uh, run me through this like early game build order that you got. Uh, the early game build order is pretty normal. Um, you go for a early wall off, uh, 13, 12 barracks, 13 gas. It's just like any other Terran startup. Uh, after the barracks is done, you just keep pumping Marines out of the barracks. You go with first 100 gas, you try and make a factory, and then you make tanks, and then you expand off one siege tank. It's kind of like the one siege tank expansion in Brood War, if you've played Brood War. Yeah, unfortunately I wasn't into StarCraft 1, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, that's where I got the idea from. It's pretty good. Okay, so do you consider this like a risky build or a safe build? It depends. If, if your opponent... Like, on ladder, it's pretty safe because no, n none of my opponents ever know what I'm doing since this is a pretty unique build. Yeah. But, like, in tournaments and stuff, I have games where, like, I demolish them the first game and then they check out the replay. And, like, if they check out the replay, there are some weaknesses you have to make sure you don't let go of. Yeah. Um, so, basically, you have to worry about maybe, like, a, a quick four gate. Is that, like, a problem? Or even, like, a three gate build? Yeah, mostly it's rushes. You just have to know when to stop all the different kinds of rushes. Because with Protoss, there's so many different rushes. Like, they can Immortal push you, Forgate, Void Rays. Blink just... Stalker, especially on this map. There's, yeah, there's, Blink Stalkers. I've had a, I got a lot of problems uh, with people just Blink Stalker rush on this map. Uh, if I go to Even if I try to go like a one-base Banshee play, they'll still Blink Stalker rush me on this map. Because there's so many ways to get in your base on this map. Yeah, that's true. You can warp in from pylons from two different places as well, so it's really annoying. So, uh, you got your uh, expansion up. What's uh, You go for like a 27 food count, that's when you like to throw up your expansion, or give a, what's your time limit on that? In the normal build, give or take, it is around 27, 28. That's when I throw down the expansion. But sometimes, uh, if I'm suspicious that the Protoss is going to do some rush or other, I alter my build. I think I might alter my build slightly in this game too, because when I was scouting around in his base, I saw he made two gases, and if you make two gases on Jungle Basin as a Protoss, it pretty much means you're gonna do something. You're not gonna expand off two gases. Yeah, you're gonna go more aggressive build. And uh, so I saw you throw up your second gas. Um, do you like to? What's your timing on your second gas after your expansion? Yeah, the second gas is right after your expansion, the first 75 minerals, because this is a pretty gas-heavy build. Yeah, most with all the siege tanks and whatnot. Um, yep. So it looks like the, he's setting up to come in for an attack. Um, do you usually have to like pull SCV sometimes to deal with rushes this early, or like what's your what do you want to keep alive in, in a fight like this? What type what units do you want to keep your tank alive, or you know what do you go for? Well, um, actually, hang on. Can we pause for a second? Yeah. I think I'm a bit off. All right, pausing. I'm at 721. All right, 721. Let me get over there. Are you ahead of me or behind me? I was behind you. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know. Some people, when I record, it's like I get ahead of them, they get behind me. But anyway, yeah, I'm at 721. Let me know when you catch up. Yeah, I'm caught up. You ready? Okay, yeah, 3, 2, 1, unpause. So, yeah, actually, it depends on what kind of rush. Um, but for this kind of rush... And this is quite popular. He's going for that 
fast void ray rush, you need to keep your marines alive. Yeah, uh, and he's using the void ray to get the vision for the top so he can warp in units. And uh, yeah, definitely the tanks can easily handle the stalkers, it's just you have to keep those, like you said, the marines alive to deal with that void ray. And you don't have yeah. skin yet, so uh, you're doing really and good taking out those stalkers. Yeah, but unfortunately, I did not keep my marines alive, and his void ray is gonna kill everything now. Because. I don't know, usually it's intuitive, you want to keep your tanks alive, but in this situation, you really need marines. Like, right here, I'm in a pretty bad situation, I have no anti-air, and he's got a fully charged void ray in my base. Yeah, it's not looking good, he's, got, he's warping in zealots also to deal with the, the marines that you're inevitably, inevitably going to try and make, and you just get up that starport. Um, do you normally make a starport in this build, or was it just because you thought you felt the void ray rush coming? Yeah, I made the starport this early because I felt the rush coming, but it I was not very prepared for this one. <clears throat> and yeah, he's just continually warping in zealots and whatnot. He's on one base, so uh, theoretically, if you can like hold this off, you should be in a good position because you've had your expansion up and running for a while. Yeah, I was just banking on that Viking that's coming out right now. That's going to be pretty much my only anti-air. And yeah, you definitely have to keep that alive and mass repair it with those uh, those uh, SCVs. But it does have a rent the range upgrade or the range over the void ray. So uh, now you only have to, have to deal with actually the stalkers coming in also. So uh, yeah, he's, he's taking out your main basically. You're forced to retreat. And uh, what's your thought process going through here right now? I am trying to do everything I can to take out that void ray right now. But as you can see, he kept the charge on it and. Yeah, I accidentally lose my Viking there because charged void rays kill Vikings so fast. It's yeah, it's pretty crazy. And you, uh, you pull SCVs. Uh, what um, what's the thought, press, thought process on pulling these SCVs just to like keep the stalkers away from the tanks or what? Yeah, and he had a lot of zealots. And basically, this is like kind of a last stand thing. If I lose this starport, I know I'm gonna lose. So I have okay. to do everything to not so, lose this starport. So that's why you pull the SCVs to keep the starport alive to make sure. And actually, you just got the uh, uh, the one void ray right there, and you got yeah. more than enough tank. So it looks like you're actually gonna pull this off. And he seems to be uh, giving up on the rush. He's throwing up an expansion and he's trying to uh, take this into a macro game. Yeah, but that rush did hurt a lot. If you look on the Harvester income count. tab, yeah, he's got almost 20 above me. Yeah, not looking too good there for you, but uh, uh, so yeah, that rush did do a lot of damage. It shows like the the strength of uh, just that type of rush on this type of map. Uh, this is definitely a map that I that I found it hard to play against Protoss on if I want to do some type of uh, non biotech or non a non bio uh, strategy. Yeah, 9 out of 10 times I can stop the Void Ray Rush, but I lost too many Marines there, and if you lose those Marines, you're going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, and uh, you just can't put enough bunkers up, unfortunately. You know, it's like you put one at the front, but then they can just come in from the side, the top side, the bottom side, and uh, there's just a lot of places to put um, pylons to just warp stuff in, unfortunately. Yeah. So, but you did get Siege uh, upgrade for your tanks, and you kind of held that off very well. So we're kind of transitioning into the mid game, and uh, now you're just gonna try and macro back up, and it looks like you're rebuilding a factory. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, right now, I know there's nothing he can do to break me with three siege tanks and a bunker and a couple Vikings. So I'm just gonna switch into full macro mode and try and get all my production facilities up. So ultimately, uh, whenever you're on two full bases saturated with four gas, what is like your production facilities look like? Like how many of what buildings do you have? So your core is going to be four factories with two tech labs and two reactors. Uh, you're going to be constantly pumping tanks and hellions out of those. And then I always get a starport with a reactor, as well as a barracks with a tech lab. So basically your core is the factories, you're always going to have lots of hellions and lots of tanks. And depending on the situation, you also have a starport with a reactor to pump Vikings out of, or you have a barracks with a tech lab to pump ghosts out of. So if he goes High Templar, you go Ghosts. If he goes Colossus or Air, you go Mass Vikings. Okay, so you have like the <coughs> the two like adapter buildings, like the, the starport to deal with the Vi uh, Colossus later uh, in certain situations. I gotcha. And uh, so this is definitely a like a slow 
a, a slow strategy, wouldn't you say? Like, um, you really can't gain map control until you get rolling, right? Yeah, definitely. This strategy pretty much relies on your fast expansion, so hopefully you expand faster than the Protoss, which should give you an economic lead for a little bit. And then you just keep mulling and try and get around a 150 to 200 food army for that one really big push. Okay, so this is like, you would say like a two base timing push? Is yeah, really? usually for me it's a two base timing push that's really strong. What situations would you uh, maybe go longer than that? Maybe turn into like a three base, like go like get a third base. I always try and get a third base when I'm moving out with the two base timing push. So basically, if that push fails or if I see something I don't like, um, for example, sometimes people like hide void rays or even carriers in some random corner of the map. So like if I see that, I have to fall back, and try and defend my. Yeah, and go, yeah, go for a contain. Long. Also, if you feel you can't break them, just kind of set up a contain and then build up more bases. And then, uh, is there any situation where you would maybe switch out of mech, like this type of mech play, or would you plan on staying mech basically the entire game and only doing a little bit of alteration, like you said, add ghosts for Templar or add Vikings for Colossus? Is there any reason you'd add like maybe five five barracks? Um, for the most part, there's not that much reason. The only Big variation would be if your opponent teched him like mass air or something, mm -hmm. and then you would have to tack on a lot of star ports to deal with that. But other than that, you're gonna be staying mech the whole game. So uh, let's pause here for a second. I'm probably uh, caught up. I'm probably like way ahead of you. I'm at 16:58. Okay, so I am gonna catch up. One sec. All right, I'm at 16:58. All right, let's unpause in three, two, one, go. So on the le left side, we got a drop coming on. Uh, I guess you wait for um, your Blue Flame Hellion upgrade, the, your uh, Pregniter, to finish, and then you go in for this drop. Yeah, actually, it's a dual drop, if you notice both the oh, main yeah, and the... Oh, yeah, there you go on the right side, too. And I do this pretty much every game, too. Uh, you know, there's a chance you'll do a lot of economic damage with this, so... Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on the Harvester count to see how much you do. Uh, but yeah, I could definitely see eight, eight Blue Flame Hellions crushing, you know, the amount of probes they have. And uh, this is kind of something I think you kind of necessarily have to do, uh, because with this slow mech play, you kind of uh, give your opponent the ability to, you know, mass expand early game. Pretty much, yeah. And with Blue Flame Hellions, they're so good at killing workers. Sometimes, yeah. you can always punish them for mass expanding. Like, if they take a early third base, not only can you do the dual drop, you can also just run four Hellions into their third base. Because they don't so have any it'll type of protection, usually. Pretty much. And usually I run it right after my drops arrive, so they pull their army back to their base, and then you send your Hellions over to their third. Okay, So yeah. you're, you're pretty much at all three mineral lines. Yeah, I saw that you uh, running in some Hellions to his uh, expansion, or his third base to uh, attack there after your... Uh, drops at, at his main, but that definitely did a ton of uh, damage. You can see the harvester count. You were uh, you probably did like 20 to 30 probe kills, and that definitely uh, put you back in the lead for the economic advantage. Yeah, and and I can see. Uh, let's just, let me check the food tab here. You're at 146 food. He's at 114, and you're yeah, like you said, just trying to mass up a, a big army of tanks and uh, hellions. You even threw in a Thor. What is the one Thor for? Uh, Thors are for air, anti-air, and phoenixes, F because phoenixes are light, so they take pretty much as much damage from a Thor as, like, mutalisks would. So, I mean, you saw some phoenixes, so that's just what you were expecting, is, uh... Pretty much, yeah. So you just get the one Thor for, uh, that? <coughs> pretty much for defense, yeah. Because sometimes, like, occasionally, Protosses do go mass phoenix, because you're going mass tanks, and they try and lift them all up. Mm -hmm. So... If you have like three Thors or something, because Phoenixes tend to clump up a lot, like you can take them out and like all of them out in one or two volleys, so it's pretty good. Yeah, they don't actually have that much life, but uh, once again, you're <coughs> excuse me harassing with those Hellions to get quite a few quite a few kills and kind of keeping the pressure on them, uh, forcing him to keep his army in his base. And his uh, combination here of uh, Colossi, Void Rays, Stalkers, and a little bit of uh, Warp Gate units. Um, what do you think about that unit combination? I think it's pretty pretty normal. People usually there's always Colossus, not always Void Rays, but 
Uh, it doesn't really matter what you know composition they go, as long as you scout it and like adjust to it, you're pretty much always gonna win. What is uh like maybe um besides like a really early push? What is like maybe the a hard like a two base like let's say a Protoss player is gonna go for a two base timing push? What unit combination would you like fear the most? Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, All what right. time are you at right yeah, now? Yeah, let's pause. I'm at twenty one thirty six. Okay, one sec. I'll just pause here for a second anyway, because he's actually getting in position to attack. Yeah, he is. 21.36. Okay, I'm matched. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, let's just say pause here for a second, and you just continually drop Hellions, because there's like Hellions all over the place. There's more Hellions in a second uh, that you dropped back there. There's another Hellions that you just ran up along the right side along that hidden path and just killed some more stuff. So, I mean, his uh, income is down to 29, and you're at 52, so those Hellions... Uh, I mean, just deal so much damage. Like, like you said, you know, you, your opponent has an advantage because you're going mech and you're on two base that he can just put up like he could have put up like theoretically like two bases uh, outside, you know, and been on four bases. But since you're going so many hellions, you can afford to throw hellions at every single one of his bases at the same time and keep those probe counts down. Yeah, pretty much. It only takes two hellions to like wipe out an entire line of probes. So. Yeah, especially if the, uh, like, I love when players just, like, grab all their probes or whatever unit, like, all their harvesters, and then just right-click, and they're on a nice big line. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, like, that's... That's not the way to micro harvesters, you know? The way I do it is, like, maybe grab, like, two or three, and then, like, attack move into the Hellions, and then just kind of spread out the rest of them around and just try to, you know, mitigate the AoE from the Hellions. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You never want to just click them all and run away like that in a straight line. Yeah, so he's getting a position to attack you. You can check the food counts. You're uh, very far ahead here in the food count, but uh, most of that was probably harvesters. Uh, let's check the army value. So army value, you are ahead in army value, uh, I would say. a lot. Uh, it's about 7,000 ahead and uh, only about 100 behind in gas. So um, fairly similar uh, army counts. Maybe you're a little bit ahead in minerals. But anyways, he's getting ready to attack you. And uh, what do you think of this, uh, this attack into uh, your two base here? Oh, I think it's extremely stupid. Um, yeah, I when, was thinking the same thing. Um, I mean, in this position, he has more bases than you. You're stuck on two base, so there's really no reason for him to attack. The really, I think the strategy for him now should be contain you, uh, put up more base defenses so Hellions don't wreck him, and just contain you to two bases. Yeah, but this actually happens quite often. It's a normal Protoss resp response to, like, losing a bunch of probes if they feel like they've lost no enough probes that they can't overcome that they'll just try and attack you and just try and uh, see if they can win the game with this one push so this yeah, is basically an all-in push for him just because he felt that there's been so much economic damage to his probe count pretty much but i've never like when you go mech and you have that many siege tanks like i've never once lost to a protoss pushing me in the late game yeah especially like, that's like, basically suicide especially against colossus i mean because colossus take that extra damage from tanks because they do bonus to armor and uh yeah maybe if they had more uh, maybe if it was more of an air army with maybe a bunch of zealots with charge that may be a different story but uh, or maybe some extra mortals but anyway uh let's get into this fight and you can kind of talk me through your uh, thought process and defending this attack um let's unpause in three two one go okay So he is attacking. I don't know. I saw what he had, and it wasn't that much. So I just tried to micro my Vikings a bit, try and snipe off whatever I can. Yeah, you had so many Vikings at this point. Your Vikings counter both of his tech units. I mean, your your Vikings counter is Colossi. Your Vikings counter is Void Rays, and you just had so many Vikings that uh, just the sheer number of Vikings you had dealt with all of his basically important high damaging units. Yeah, uh, if you scout Colossus or Air early enough. You can get like that many Vikings by by the time you push, just from one just from, reactor starport. Yeah, one reactor starport. I was kind of surprised how many Vikings you had. When I first watched this replay, I was like, how many starports does he have? And I was looking around, and it was just one. I'm like, well, I guess if you, if you continually produce Vikings, uh, you can make a lot. And uh, so you felt, I mean, that attack went pretty badly for him, and now you're on the offensive, and you're just going to try and uh, take out his expansions? Yeah, I scanned his force, and I knew he couldn't stop me from doing it. Uh, his army looked rather small, so... I guess my Hellion Harass really, like, hurt him a lot. Yeah, I think in terms your, of the your Hellion Harass, like, totally brought you back in this game. I mean, his early attack did so much damage to you, and you were kind of down and out, but that Hellion Harass, just, like, continual Hellion Harass just totally brought you back in the game. 
and you could afford like you could produce so many hellions because uh, you know you went so many factories and you know if this was a bio build they would be dropping marines and marauders and stuff, hellions and hellions just kill uh, probes so much faster yeah, and what I like about this build is, like, the Hellion Harass is only a bonus. You don't actually need Harass to win, but if you don't, it's going to be pretty close. It's going to be, like, depending on your positioning, depending on his positioning. Whereas if you do Harass, you can pretty much just overrun him. And you just finished your two, uh, two mech upgrades, um, so this fight is pretty much one-sided. Uh, let's talk about upgrades here for a second. What type of upgrades do you look for? Uh, what type of upgrades do you get in just this, this build? Uh, in this build, I generally try and get one or two me attack upgrades. It doesn't matter that much for mech, actually, because mech units are more expensive, so you don't have as much of them as you do bio. And also, tanks do so much damage that you don't actually need to upgrade too much by the time your two base timing push comes. Alright, but you try to get, you know, a couple of attack upgrades on them. Yeah, a couple of attack upgrades are always good. All right, so yeah, this is a very interesting game. Um, let's see what. Let's talk about like maps and what strategy this or what maps the strategy works best and worst on. This strategy works best on maps where you can get your second really easily. Like this is a great map for it. Um, just any map where you can like secure your second, like Lost Temple pretty easy map because you have that big ledge mm -hmm. that you can siege a tank on and they can't really attack your expansion. Yeah, I was thinking that. As opposed to like maps like Metalopolis or Zelnaga Caverns where your expansion is completely exposed. Those maps are harder, but it's still very doable on those maps. So I pretty much go mech on every single map. Oh, so and there isn't like a one, there's not just one map, there's not like that map that, you know, you thumbs down because uh, it just doesn't work well on it? Um... I would say uh, Blistering Sands is a map I thumbs down because Mech is too immobile and you have and two you, openings to your base, so yeah, you pretty much need to go bio on Blistering Sands. And your bases Sands. are so separate. Like this map is similar to Blistering Sands because of the back door, but you can basically put a put your Mech army in between both your bases and cover, you know, both of the ground entrances at least. Yeah, pretty much. So it does work for most most maps, just not Blistering Sands, I think. Yeah, I would probably agree with you on there. Uh, the only thing you could do on Blistering Sands is maybe put your army outside of your base in that sweet spot, but then that's kind of a lot harder to, like, uh, fortify. But that'd be the only thing I could think of maybe getting it to work would be, like, putting it outside, you know, both bases outside in that center sweet spot where maybe you're, the army normally goes and sits and camps at. But, uh, yeah, I really like this uh, strategy. I'd, I'd like to see uh, something besides Marine Marauder medevac against protoss because that gets kind of old <laughs> yeah i'm just hoping to show some terrans you know a new new way to play against protoss because a lot of them are complaining you know if protoss survives past 12 minutes or something they automatically win because their late game advantage is so good yeah and i mean you have to think like of course uh templar and colossus should be in a marine marauder i mean we're talking a barracks unit versus like a you know tier three unit with upgrades so of course, a, uh, a Protoss player is going to win late game if you don't get anything higher than that. But, yeah, I really like the strategy. I think we're going to, as the game progresses, we're going to see a lot more mech play uh, from Terran players. I just, I don't think it had to, I don't know why, but maybe people love playing that aggressive Marine Marauder, and uh, they just really haven't thought about, you know, longer term strategy. Yeah, I'm actually pretty surprised. I've seen several posts on Team Liquid about you know, mech strategies, but no one's ever accepted it, which is weird because I've only used mech strategies and my win percentage against Protoss is very good. Yeah, and I actually did another, uh, like another analysis uh, with another high-level Terran player who actually showed a, a mech strategy against a Protoss on uh, Lost Temple, and I, it was similar to yours, a little bit different. Um, it didn't rely on like a fast expansion and it was a little bit different, but uh, both I think are very, very nice because Siege Tanks just do so much damage to Colossi and, uh, you know, the range and the bonus damage and all that good stuff. So, uh, anything else you want to say? Any plugs or shout-outs you want to have? Um, shout-out to my team, Mobility Gaming. If you guys want to check out the website, we're going to have VODs and commentaries and lessons soon on that website so if you guys want to check it out I think it'll be on the video link or something 
yeah, I can put a link to that on the comments for uh, on my YouTube page for it. So what is it like, mobilitygaming.com? Uh, mobilitygaming.com, yeah, I'll let you know right after this. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so thanks for this. Uh, thanks for coming on, showing everybody your TVP mech strategy, and I really hope we start seeing more of this in the future. Um, anything else? Uh, that's it. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for coming on, and I hope everybody enjoyed this. Leave comments. And if you guys have any questions for him, uh, leave them on the YouTube page too. And I uh, hope everybody enjoyed this, and I'll see you all later. And we're done.